This video is proudly sponsored by DigimonCard.io for all your Digimon card, deck building, deck list, card pricing, and discussion needs. Hey everyone, Eggman here with a, another video, and I'm joined with Sergi Chernyshov, if that's correct. How, how do I do? Good enough. Good enough? Awesome. All right, I will, I will take it. I, I can't even pronounce Digimon card names like correctly. How can I, how can I hope to get real names uh, very consistently? But uh, despite that awful butchering, we do have the uh, Lilith Loop uh, list that you did play in the Core TCG Webcam Regional this past weekend, and uh, you were able to get an X1 top four finish with this list, and uh, I think it's really cool. I think it's a list that's not a lot of people are playing. It's obviously kind of a hark uh, to, you know, BT8 format, and I just want to talk about the deck itself, your experiences, and, and just kind of go from there. So, uh, well, first we will go to, uh, I, I guess before we even talk about the, the cards, what, what kind of made you choose this deck and, and why, why this kind of style and, and stuff? All right. So I haven't gotten a chance to get a hold of BT9 product yet for like various reasons. Like mm -hmm. the, I couldn't get to the store in, in time. And by the time I got to my local store, they were out of product. They didn't get as big of a shipment. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't have access to BT9. I was, I, but I already signed up for the regionals at this point. And I was mm -hmm. wondering what to play. Um, I was just in a call with, um, with like Ying. They were pla practicing uh, in the background. And I offhandedly mentioned this. And Ying told me, Ying Huang, you know, yeah, yeah. He, uh, <laughs> he told me that, uh, why don't you just play my Lilith Loop list? You know, I have it posted in Mod Chat and mm -hmm. Huang's server. Uh, and I went, sure, why not? So I just took his list um, and I took it to Top Cut Regional and Core TCT Regionals. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't do so well in Top Cut. I made like one minor change from there and then I went, I got super lucky and did super well in Core TCG. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, we've seen this kind of, I think Lilith Loop is uh, probably like the catchphrase for it. I think like a purple rush can be kind of popular for it too. There's kind of like a lot of different lines you can kind of pursue with this list, depending on what you see and what your kind of opponent is, which I think is uh, really cool and kind of interactive. Yeah, it's super flexible. I really love going for like the alternate win con, especially mm -hmm. in certain matchups. Yeah, yeah. And meaning the, the mill out win con, correct? Yes. Yes, yeah. So, uh, well, I'm going to try my best to decipher some of this list. You can definitely chime in whenever I'm wrong or not close enough, but uh, you're not running a lot of rookies, which uh, normally would be kind of bad, but I think the important ones you hear, Gazi and Psychmon, I think are both important for memory blocking and Psychmon being able to stop Mother, which I, th I would say like inherently might be a bad matchup if they're able to set up their gatekeepers. So that kind of preventing them if you need to is good. And then uh, in worst case, like even just hard casting a scatter mode, if you see it, I think is not like the worst thing of the deck. And you do have the service mode package for the rush if you want to also getting more card cycle. And if you want to go up to the Lilithmon stuff, you can. Dead or Alive helps not only get the chaos ones out, but also the werewolf modes, which can, you know, gain a lot of memory back from the uh, service from there. We're running Creepymon for the alternate win condition, like you said. Avenge Kidmon and Junomon, uh, just kind of for some. I guess what? What's what's the Junomon for? Maybe maybe that's the first stop. For so me. Avenge Kid, it feels really important to have in this deck because mm -hmm. you you draw and you mill yourself super hard. So it's not unoften, even if it's like it's like a medium speed game where it's mm -hmm. like it's not like super fast, but it's medium speed. You can very easily deck yourself out. So Avenge Kid is super important just to like prevent that from happening. Mm -hmm. um, like back when Mega Digimon Fusion was available, you used to be able to just keep yourself in the game using that bottom decking your sword at the end of the turn. But mm -hmm. without it, you kind of needed some way to like prevent yourself from like offing yourself. Sure. So Avenge Kid is important. And I like having Junomon around because sometimes, you know, Avenge Kid could be milled by one of your effects, it could be in your security. And so you need some way to like bring it back. And there's obviously there's like the, the only stay in the game loop where you can like, you know, use Juno to bring back Avenge Kid. Avenge Kid can bring. Um, calling from the darkness back to the top of your deck, and then you can grab that and use it to uh, bring back the Junamon back to your hand, and so yeah. sort of repeat that process and keep yourself perpetually in the game. Yeah, yeah, that definitely helps. And honestly, even like if your deck is empty, but you can put like four Jack Rays to the top of it, uh, and then just you know get the draws and just the free memory from this at the end of the game, I think can be kind of huge. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's just like another way to like. Um, Recycle your resources. A lot of times, where I was able to uh, just get back the Jack Raids or the Death Slingers, like at a, a very crucial moment by just putting them to the top of my deck. 
Yeah, for sure. And I think like purple is always kind of like a, a color based on like momentum and resources, where if you're able to set up your trash very early, which I think this deck can, if it hit, you hit your you know eyes mod correctly, or you, you can go into service mode and that kind of stuff, uh, you can fill up your trash very quickly and just get so many resources from it. So um, I, th I think that kind of makes sense just from the, how how this deck functions and, and everything else. But I think, uh, real quick, so we also do have Zwart, uh, which can have some lines uh, getting back. It unfortunately cannot get the werewolf mode back because that's be cost of eight or less, but you can get like the regular uh, Cerberus Mon and then hard cast a werewolf on top, which is fine. Uh, and, you know, obviously the loop mechanics there too, if you want to get super flashy and which, you know, promote also can get a rush for game if you're close yeah. enough with it, which is nice. And uh, you're pretty often getting back the promote with the sword effect because mm -hmm. it's on play and you get just a bit of extra value from getting that um, the plus one memory and draw one. Yeah. Which also can like help you basically makes work like effectively a five cost mm -hmm. which can mm -hmm. come up quite a few times yeah for sure and you are running the win rate 60 percent, which you would need to have an analog youth or i guess another zwart on the field to get that effect off or because it's the only tamer you have in the right. set but, it's, but it, you, you draw through your deck on enough that you usually see your analog youth at some point and it's mm -hmm. such a cheap, cheap tamer to drop down at any way yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the uh, it, yeah, just being able to put stuff in your trash, being able to find stuff. Did, was there one time where you hit three options off analog youth and you uh, you have to send them all to the trash? Or... Oh yeah, it happens. Yeah, uh, yeah, occasionally it doesn't happen super often, but um, it's like not even the worst because at least you that's mill three get mm -hmm. closer to your um your trash thresholds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh cool, and I and then I think the only other I think everything else is standard. The death slinger. Uh, you are just, there's no way to trash this from your deck, right? This is just hard casting for four to pop something, right? There is. There's Creepymon, there's Omnimon, Sword, and there's Junimon. All three of these can potentially pop mm, it off. I see, okay. I think there are times where I, like, go for, like, the, the lottery play where if I go into Sword and it does hit Jet Death Slinger, I can keep my turn. Mm -hmm. I might have hit that, like, maybe once. Um, you know, but it's plausible, right? Can, can yeah. occasionally happen. If you, if you know um, you have like 10 cards left in deck and two of them are probably Death Slinger because you don't know it's in your security, that's like a, a moderate, reasonable way to do it. Yeah, I do see that now, so. Yeah, and if you're like really cheeky, you can like set up for it using Avenge Kidmon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, if you are, <laughs> if you are in the card counting state, if you are, if you're really feeling it, yeah, I could definitely see that. Uh, yeah, because Avenge Kidmon, as you said, literally just to save yourself, and you you have so many option cards, and you can probably get this down to looking at the option cards. You probably got this down to like a a five cost or less pretty consistently. Yeah. Yeah, it's usually three cards or less. Pretty often it's free because your opponent is usually playing at least some options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, because it counts for both players, yeah. so. Yeah. And just uh, having a free body and a free pop is, uh, you know, that's a huge tempo boost that can just be the game-winning decider right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he's such an interesting card uh, that you would almost want, like, you think it would only exist in, like, a side deck format, but uh, main decking, like, in this way. And, like, I know, like... Uh, like yellow purple security control list are also running him for pretty much the same idea where you can recycle yourself you don't deck out yourself and uh, you get a lot of value from from that as well uh well cool well, this is the list i think a lot of you guys already knew that part of it but i think a lot of people were more interested too on uh kind of your matchups and your experience with uh with that in in this event especially in a, in a format where there's so much emphasis on ending the game as quickly as possible and this deck doesn't have a lot of defense uh but i think it's if you are able to set up you can finish you know faster than a lot of other decks right now it does actually have a surprisingly bit of a defense um, I'm, the pops from Death Slinger, Death Claw, and Lose Someone Chaos Mode are actually pretty important. Okay. And that also kind of determines how good some of your matchups are. Mm -hmm. um, like, I was surprised going into this event. I thought Metal, Metal Garurumon would be, like, probably my worst matchup, but it was actually, like, what, probably one of my better ones. Just mm -hmm. the fact that Metal Garurumon does have, have any protection from it and is a single stack deck. Mm -hmm. A lot of moments where I just, either it hits something in security that pops it, or it gets just short of killing me and then i pop it on my turn yeah. uh just wins me the game from that moment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah because again like a death or a dead or alive or a death slinger in security will probably pop it most of the time and uh you're the dp of a lot of your cards are i think are higher than average because you, you know if if they have the ex antibody in their stack they they get protection from one battle right but uh with one or two battles depending or, on their stack. yeah exactly so 
uh, I don't think it's unheard of to have, you know, two just high DP things just in your security and being able to get through that too, if, if needed. I do remember a specific moment where I got lucky and my opponent playing Metal Garu um, made a stack without any of that protection, mm. swung in um, and hit a Zwart. And Ooh, then it, just, I just, uh, I just sort of won. Yeah. <laughs> just from that. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you, I, uh, this guy's kind of like security is so important in this game right now where it really just feels like the top five cards of your deck kind of determine more than most of the other game. Because if you have the good card at the right time in security, you probably just win the match. And, uh, uh, this this has a lot of potential to do that in a lot of ways, especially like a dead or alive in your security. Uh, if you already have the chaos mode, it's just you just feel like you win so much. Like there's just very few things that can interact with that. It's huge too, and mm -hmm. sometimes you dead or alive for the werewolf mode when you have a Cerberus on board. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and then you get to pop it, and then you it's just immediately your turn now. It's just immediately my turn. That happened once this tournament against <laughs> the PBA player. Yeah. Oh man, did he did he recognize that it wasn't his turn anymore? Did you have to be like, yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I pulled it out. I said I gained nine memory, and he said, "Well, uh, yeah." <laughs> That's very funny. Well, uh, I know a lot of people were interested specifically on the the matchups that you had. Do you have a, a kind of a rough estimate of of what you played against, and maybe uh, what you would say is the most favorable and the uh, least favorable matchup for this list? Right, so I do have the matchups I did play written down. I don't have the exact order, but I know which ones I fought. Cool. I know I fought Imperial, Bellstar, two D-Brigade players, a Security Control, two uh, Metal Garurumon players, one Alphamon, and one Greymon slash Gaiamon deck. Okay, okay. Yeah, awesome. And uh, and so you did go X1 with the, the one loss being to Alphamon, which happened to be... Uh, Kelvin, who got second at the event, so yeah, pretty pretty you know high ranking. You know, a lot of the uh, what is it, the opponent's win score uh, was probably pretty high for that loss there. But uh, what do you think that was a situation where that matchup is is pretty rough for you on on this guy, or uh, was it just uh, how how that match go? I guess in general, uh, I do feel like after playing that match, that Alphamon is likely my worst matchup, right? Okay, yeah, um, like I. I feel like I rely a lot on the deletion aspects of the deck, and mm -hmm. with him having protection, there's just, just like nothing I can do, right? Sure. If even even if he just doesn't even OTK me, he just like sets up a Doru Greymon and have it sit there. I just have to stare at it and like just be upset. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then sure. or you can being a level seven means I it's also kind of limited on what I can use to remove it. Like Lucima no longer pops it. Uh, Th this singer pops it, but I need like thirty or more cards in trash. Yeah. Right. And by the time he and you usually get, um, or you can out quick enough that it tends to be before 30 cards in trash. Yeah. Uh, I've popped things level 7s with Deathslinger before, but like in security control matchups typically against Dexmon, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that makes those sense. Because are, those actually last long enough that I can get that at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but they're really fast. They have protection. And against Kelvin specifically, he he teched in the two Chumons, mm. and that really killed the matchup for me, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I had a play, right, where he had Shumon in Raising, and I evolved a Lilithmon just to grab Deathclaw and Deathslinger from my trash to prepare for it. Mm -hmm. um, and then he pulled it, that Shumon out and then played the second one. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was devastating. Yeah. All right. So I could Deathclaw one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is like where one of my deck choices might have come back to bite me in the butt because Ying's original list was playing. One Psychmon, one Elecmon, mm. which I swapped out for another Psychmon because I, I was see. solely losing to a D Reaper player. Mm -hmm. uh, and if that Psychmon was the Elecmon I swapped out, that would have popped both, and I would have been yes. possibly had a chance to win that match because all I needed was like one good turn. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Him having double Chumon bottomed like the one turn he needed to like just pop off the next turn and like end me right then and there. Yeah, gotcha. uh, but oh. yeah, but protection is um kind of like protection plus the fast damage uh of alphamon like really makes that like the worst matchup yeah and i and in, in a lot of ways even though it's with different cards i think alphamon is to try to do pretty similar to what this deck is doing except for you know it's a single stack and you are you're kind of like a you got a lot of backup plans in this deck which i think is really fun but you do need the setup for him yeah a lot of setup is like pretty not like as reliable i guess like mm -hmm. they just drop cool boy and they they dig through their deck, they drop the bamboos, they dig through their deck. I kind of have to, like, make the scatter mode, have it come out and swing and mm -hmm. hope it dies. Hope to, it dies, yeah. That's, like, basically majority of the setup comes from that specific setup. 
Yeah, yeah. And like you have your like your two drop white tamer, but like cool boy still way better than it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So uh yeah, I can I can definitely see uh that matchup being a little bit tough. Uh I don't know. Like I, I still think Alphamon is probably if if it sees all of its pieces, it's probably best deck in form. I think a lot more people are probably playing Metal Gurumon and it's probably a little bit more consistent. Then, uh, I think NA has a blue bias. It does. It sure does. Uh, a lot of people love the guy. So honestly, if if this, uh, you know, if you feel like this has a good matchup against that, I could see this. Uh, I, don't know, I think it'd be a, a somewhat good meta call for, for anyone who's trying to, you know, play the deck in general. I think there are some good matchups for it right now. Yeah. Yeah. I figured blue would be pretty bad because of the bounce effects denying my undulations. But like, they're, they're actually kind of minor setbacks mm -hmm. in comparison. Just having one good deletion uh, like at the the perfect moment like really turns things around for you against metal garu mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And especially that's because thing, like uh... effects, you, when you pop off you can really do a lot of damage so sometimes all you need to do is buy yourself one turn mm -hmm. for that one perfect turn where you win the game yeah yeah for sure and like uh it's, it's the same kind of thing with i'm guessing like armor rush they've got like mega death they run like to run a lot but uh, and you did play Imperial Dramon, you did win it. Like, even, like, bouncing back to hand more times than not is not too terrible because you can just vote your stack again if you have the time for it. And them using a five memory card means they give you time. Uh, but even if it's on deletion, you have, Purple has just so many recycle options that uh, it doesn't, if you, you're able to see them, you can just kind of start doing what you're wanting to do again anyways, so. Well, cool. Well, I think that is most of what I have. Any, I guess, two more things. One, any major changes you would make after playing this tournament? Uh, anything that you would maybe tech in to have a better Alphamon matchup? Uh, Alphamon is a hard one to tech for. It is, uh, it is. They have just too much. Like, Purple doesn't have a lot of options in terms of like getting around anti-deletion. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess it's possible to tech in more yellow if they put in Chaos Degrade. Yeah, that, that, uh, but at that point, then you're just making Security Control, right? Yeah, at that point, it's like, why don't you just play in Security Control mm -hmm. or Mastamon or that, uh, that like, Anjuamon, Anjuamon X deck that's oh, running around? Yeah, yeah. I, sure. I considered playing that if it were for the fact that I couldn't get a hold of BT9 product, but, like, I guess we live in the best timeline. Yeah, no, yeah, your your best timeline at least. So yeah, um, but yeah, I agree. Like, I think I think that's the big thing for a lot of people with Alphamon. Like, honestly, it no, don't get me wrong, it does a lot and it has some like really strong things. But I think the strongest thing about it is that whether you like it or not, they're going to be doing their thing, and you don't have a lot of interaction for them doing their thing. It, it's that's more right. of you know the Alphamon player decides if they win or lose, not much of anything else. Uh, a couple considerations I might have made at some point are, like, maybe a memory tamer because mm -hmm. of, like, how often I get, like, locked to one. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my plays are, like, two memory or more because, like, yeah. all evolving all into any of my fours cost two. Um, and if I'm, my opponent has a memory tamer and I don't, that's kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a couple people ask me, like, if I did have BT9, if there are any decks, any cards from there I put in the stack and, like... Bexmon is somewhat of a consideration, and that's mm -hmm. only because that card on its own is just individually strong. Yes, not, like, yeah. not because that it fits my deck in any way. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it's purplish, so like it, like you're like, oh, of course I want to run it, but uh, and, and like of course being able to like play it for five and just win the game on the spot sometimes feels pretty good. So yeah. I can I can see that too. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I like the only other consideration I've made is like towards. Um, Wizardmon, and that's only because he's my favorite po Digimon, so yeah. it's like, maybe I put him in for luck. I know a friend of mine, um, Cooper Koshiro, who got also top 16 in this event, mm -hmm. uh, does that with his favorite Digimon, uh, Kunemon. He plays the one of in his oh, grand. Oh, okay. Deck. Yeah, yeah. I just see, he's, he's playing the uh, the blue, not base, but like with the Davises and uh, yeah. and like the option cards. Yeah, that was that was a really cool list, too. It's uh, mm -hmm. And like, the, the Kunemon being able to offer him uh, that extra luck is, is really fun, too. Yeah, the the dash pack um, wizard mon from like the BT six dash pack, I think mm -hmm. has applica application in this deck. I just need to find space to fit him in somehow. Yeah, I will say, like looking at this list, like most most have like two or three lines. So like for this one to accomplish four lines on the deck builder is is pretty impressive. And yeah, there's not. I would say if if Digimon ever has like a, like they do in Dragon Ball Super, where instead of a hard fifty, it's like fifty to sixty cards. I'd almost say like Lilith Loop would immediately be like, yes, please give me. I will take five more spots for I don't know a couple 
I don't know. There's so there's so many good level fours that you want to try to squeeze all of them into the deck, and it's it's hard to find the right. room sometimes. So, well, cool. Any any last shout outs then before we end this? Uh, shout outs to Ying Huang, obviously, because mm -hmm. he's the one who built this deck and convinced me to play it. Mm -hmm. uh, shout outs to everyone in the Huang server Discord. I, I mod there somewhat. Like, <laughs> I guess I hang out there if the is a better descriptor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, cool. And also, uh, I, he, well, fortunately, I have not seen it yet because uh, I've been on, on leave, but uh, this, you did, you did have a match with this. It was against the, the Alpha Mon, so uh, spoilers, uh, you did not win this, but uh, I think Human was doing uh, some commentary for that match too. So no doubt he has some insights for the matchup and probably some ad additional things uh, specifically during that, that uh, might be worth watching. So I'll have that linked in the description of this video too, if you guys want to see that. And I think that will be it. So thank you guys so much for watching. We do appreciate it. And we'll catch you all next time. Damn it.